Smelts. <laughs> These home cooks are squirming like little smelts. Smelt? Or is it schmelt? It's even got a dumb name. Schmelt. Who named that fish? Smelts are they're tiny fish. You don't want to overdo anything to them. I'm going to batter them in some flour. I'm going to fry them nice and crispy, like my mom used to make. One thing you got to be careful, smelt, it doesn't carry a lot of flavor. It's a very mild fish. Yes. What would you be making with smelts? Well, I would just simply bread it, a bit of flour, deep fry, get it a bit crispy, and season it. I would probably go down the same route. I would be definitely deep frying. Yes. I might even add a little bit of ground corn flour, because it's a nice bit of crunch, crunch and texture. Yes. Exactly. Today I'm making a fish soup with soba noodles topped with some braised smelt and some crispy smelt. I'm going to try to fry it. I'm extremely worried. It smells putrid. It's slimy, it's gross. I really don't want to work with it. What is this? Smelt broth with soba noodles topped with a braised smelt and deep fried smelt. My favorite is the braised smelt because I find it very innovative and even I would not think of something like that. Thank you, Chef. Delicious lemon eel, do a bit of heat. Took a massive risk here. Smelts three ways, and every way is good. Looks like you made shoe pastry. Yes, I did, Chef. They are cheese gorges stuffed with the smelt that has been pan fried in butter for a few minutes. You know you got it right if it's hollow in the middle. Is this hollow in the middle? Yes, they are, Chef. Look at that. Perfectly hollow. That's a sign of somebody who has some great technique. The fish have a very nice texture, actually. Very soft, delicate, fantastic. Well, the gougere is cooked impeccably. Perfect little vessel to put the smelt in. The creaminess and the dill actually work. I am impressed. Well done. I lightly floured and I deep fried the smelt. I also made a little vegetable soup with a homemade noodle. I think it's a very nice presentation. The fact that you've used a little kitchen towel to take out some of that extra oil from the frying, it's one of the best I've seen today in Thank presentation. You. Very nice. It's the kind of dish I'd like to go home to at night. I'm intrigued by this. What is this? It's a homemade noodle. They're called tagliatelle. It's incredible that you managed to do all of this in such a short period of time. I would serve this in my restaurant. That is truly an honor for you to say that. He did something that I couldn't do in an LA. He's the one to watch. Tell me what you're doing. Chanterelle mushroom monkfish. And the sea urchin? Just made a broth with taro root and a little bit of fish sauce. So you use the taro root to thicken the broth? That's right. Oh, smart idea. Have you ever worked with sea urchin? No, I'm definitely taking a risk. How do you feel about your dish? I feel like this is the strongest dish that I've brought up to you. Walk me through it. What is it? Brown butter basted monkfish served in a sea urchin velite. And I've topped it with chanterelle mushroom and a little bit of taro crisps for some crunch. It's very good. I'm talking like Alvin, my mouthful. <laughs> I like the acidity. The fish is cooked properly. It's a great dish. It's good to see you coming to the top now. Thank you very much. Thank you. I love lobster. I cook it like once a week. I used to eat a lot of lobster when I lived in New Brunswick. It's something I'm familiar with for sure. I'm thinking I'm gonna crush it. Lobster is one of my favorite ingredients. The one thing you have to be very worried about though is overcooking, because an overcooked lobster is inedible. You know, one of the challenges with working with lobster is that it's hard to remove the meat from the shell, and there's not a whole lot of it when you do get it out. Oh my god, I've never cooked lobster before. And I've probably eaten lobster maybe three times in my life. Beside the meat from the tail, 
in the class, the best bit, it's what's in the head. Or the correct term is tamale. My stomach's turning at this point. Don't just stand there, go and get it. Eeny, meeny, miny, moe. Tamara. Hi, Chef. So you've picked out lots of ingredients from the pantry, keeping your options open? Yes, Chef. So what are you preparing? I am doing a Caribbean Asian fusion with a little bit of curry and butter poached lobster. Any concerns with the delicate flavors of the lobster, using curry, how big and robust it can be? Yes, Chef, I'm just using curry as an accent. I'm not actually currying anything. So a subtle background. You got it, Chef. Thank you. I'm making a very simple lobster risotto. So I really want to showcase the flavor of the lobster and uh, make sure the judges love it. Eric. Hello, Chef. What are you doing? Poaching the lobster in butter? I'm cooking a lobster risotto. Anything in there in terms of aromatics? I'm going to put most of the aromatics in my stock. So you're going to make a quick stock? You think you'll have enough time? Because uh, that flavor of that lobster is key yes. to success. It better be good. Yes, Chef. Mike, how are yeah. you doing? Doing all right, Chef. Okay, how long have you cooked that for? That was uh, just 10 minutes right on the dot. What do you think? Is it going to be just right? I think it's going to be just right. Well, I hope so. What are you doing anyway? Just kind of like a little deconstructed lobster roll. Deconstructed, I like well, that. Well, yeah, yeah. So I'm just making the garlicky croutons over here. I'm doing a little smoked paprika corn. And then I've just made my own aioli. Are you going to do anything with that lovely tamale, you know? Yeah, that's going to go in my aioli. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Well, I tell you, this sounds great. Let's hope it tastes good, eh? <laughs> yeah, thank you. It's just a little take on a lobster roll. Garlicky crustini underneath. The lobster was simply boiled in salty water. I've got some smoked paprika corn and just a bit of sauteed capers. And then there's an aioli made with the tamale. I like the balance between corn and the capers and the lobster is not disguised. I love lobster rolls because they're soft and tender. And the bread here is very crispy, but I do appreciate the fact that you were creative with a very common luxury ingredient. So good job. Thank you, Chef. I don't get much lobster roll where I come from. I don't know the difference between a soft bun and a hard bun, but I sit on a hard bun every day. <laughs> so that was a good one, Chef. Fantastic. Very nice. The lobster, that's done to perfection. And of course, the tamale gives it that extra crustacean, that extra flavor. Very, very tasty one. All right. Thank you, Chef. Top seven, and they're loving this dish. I feel pretty good. The next dish that we want to see is also on the light and simple side. I've got my fingers crossed that mine will stand out. I think they're talking about me. Please step forward. Tamara. Tell me about your dish. A butter poached lobster with Thai mango slaw, with fresh peas and some red onion and some celery leaf. If you overcook a lobster, it is tough, it is rubbery. This should be moist, succulent, tender. If cooked just to the point. Do you think it's cooked to the point? Yes, Chef. It doesn't. Disappoint. Thank you, Chef. The mango, the pink grapefruit, the shredded sugar snap peas, crisp, citrus, refreshing. Simple, but very tasty. Thank you, Chef. Every time you go in the pantry, you have two baskets with you. I like to see you have one basket and plan it out and focus a little bit more. The lobster is perfect. You could have just had this on a plate to basically show us how well you cook lobster. Thank you, Chef. Four of you decided to go Italian on your lobster today. I definitely want these judges to taste and know that I can cook more than Asian food. One of those dishes stood out. Come on. I really think this is one of my best dishes. I'm hoping they see that I took a risk. To get this advantage is huge. It was made by... Eric. Nothing against Eric, but I really wanted to be called up there. 
I use the body and the shells to make my stock, and I only use the tail, claw, and knuckle meat in my risotto. There's some carini mushrooms, Parmesan cheese. The rice, I think, has all the characteristics of an outstanding risotto. You used the shells and increased the flavors by various aromatics. You can taste a lobster in it, and that's the key with risotto. Very good. How does that look to you? Slightly overcooked, Chef. I would say slightly overcooked. I tried butter poaching it for the first time, Chef. Okay. It's a bad mistake. But I must say, the risotto is perfect and it's delicious. Very nice. Thank you, Chef. What are you making here? I am making curry shrimp with roti. Have you cooked with shrimp before? Yes. That's delicious. Wow, that is hot. Yes, I didn't put that much in it. Oh. <laughs> I can't wait for you guys to try Marita's dish. But it looks like a very small portion, so I hope I'm going first. Marita, please bring your plate up. While I cook this dish, I put a lot of love into it. I really thought of my family. Curry and seafood is what I grew up on. And it reminded me of my sister, because she cooks like a Trinidadian grandma, also like my mom. The avocado, I guess, is uh, designed to cool everything down a bit? Yes, nice and creamy. Hmm. And it works. This is, to date, the best dish I've had. It's really, it's incredible. Oh, it's you could have this in a restaurant anywhere. Oh, wow. I want the recipe. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. I think I should do this the right way, on the roti, right? Yes, that's Which right. Which is nicely done. No forks allowed. No forks allowed, that's right. Oh, I'm in love. Yes. Thank you, chef. It's such a big compliment. I chose razor clams because it's something I've never worked with before. If I'm going to move on to the finale, I need to do it big. It's going to be tomato-based sauce, fresh herbs, garlic, scotch bonnet, lime juice, some nice mango in there for sweetness. This dish is going to take the judges to the beach of Trinidad. The razor clam is one of my favorites. Steamed with garlic, a little bit of oil. That, to me, is simple, delicious. The real pitfall for her would be to overcook. Eric. Hello, Chef. Tell me about your dish. What are you making? We're going to do a uh, green Thai curry with a uh, coconut rice. Curry. Do you think a curry might overpower the flavor of the crab? I think curry and crab go well together. It's not going to be super spicy curry. It's going to be sweeter and like herbaceous with the lemongrass, kefir lime leaves. I like citrus notes with uh, crab. Who do you think uh, might be going home today? I think Rita's a stronger cook, so I'd like her to go home. Good luck. Keep an eye on the clock. Tell me what flavors went into the sauce and the crab. Fresh cilantro, lemongrass, garlic, onion, jasmine rice cooked in coconut milk, and then a crab broth that I made. Nice little presentation, quite innovative. The only concern I have is the large lime wedges. They're large? I just think if you take a mouthful of sweet, delicate crab, you have this huge hit of sour lime. Not something I would have done. The flavors of that sauce are very good. There is a subtle heat, the richness of the coconut milk. It's all there, it's nicely balanced. However, that lime troubles me. Top three. It's an incredible achievement for everyone here. And you are only, what, 21 years old? Yes, Chef. Incredible. Is this dish going to be incredible, though? I personally think it's the best dish I've put up so far. So it's a Thai dish. Is it authentic Thai, or is it Eric Thai? Eric Thai. Tell me about the rice. Uh, it's just jasmine rice cooked in coconut milk. Delicious. Thank you, Chef. I don't think I've met a 21-year-old that cooks this way. Thank you. That means a lot. It's incredible. Marita, please come up. I sauteed a little bit of garlic and some olive oil. I've got sweet mango, crunchy peppers and cucumbers, a sweet tomato, and a little bit of the razor clam juice. Toss it all in. I like the fact that you've used the shell. 
Great way to present, and it gives people an idea of what a razor clam looks like. Yes, chef. Those flavors are wonderful. They work together well. They have good lengths to them, clean, crisp. I do wish there was a little more clam in it because there's a lot of garnish. The clam, spot on. I can still taste the sweetness. I'm really happy you didn't put too much heat in because razor clam is very delicate and you respected that. I like that. I like that very much. Thank you, chef. This dish is Trinidadian and Canadian meat. So I've got the black cod and I've got some pigeon peas. I love fish and I love it with fresh mango and cucumber chutney. This flavor right here. Looks like he's just about to start working on his noodles. He is, to me, almost the pasta master. He loves working with noodles, and the fact that he's using a guitar, which is a special little device, an Italian device to make those noodles, shows that he's very confident and comfortable that he can make a really great noodle. I think I'm being the right amount of ambitious doing these techniques for my entree because it's all calculated, and I know I can execute it. There's the scotch bonnet. I love my scotch bonnet, okay? It's delicious, it's spicy, and it's got flavor, just like me. Oh, that smells good, Marita. You smell it up there? Yeah, girl. Marita, what you working on? I'm working on my cucumber chutney. They're all telling you it smells good. Yes, chef. It sure does. It sure does, absolutely. I can smell the heat in that, too. No more! Come on, girl. It's got a good solid base. Looking great, Marita. Have you worked with black cod before? The good thing about the black cod, it is kind of forgiving. It's going to be I'm not nice so sure fish. about that myself. Because it is a white fish that is very flaky and become overcooked very quickly. And when it's overcooked, it is dry. And nobody wants to eat a dry piece no. of fish. Keep it nice and moist. Thank you. I have to make sure I cook that cod perfectly. Or else, I'm done like dinner. minutes. You have 30 minutes remaining. You're now at the halfway mark. The cooking of the lobster has to be perfect. Lobster is a family favorite, and I definitely can't let them down because I feel like I disappointed them in the lobster challenge before. How you doing, Eric? What do you have in here? A lot of herbs, uh, spices, uh, coriander, and grasses. Your lobsters are chilling? How are they cooked? Are they medium rare right now? They're slightly under. Oh, look at that. How long did you cook these lobsters for? Uh, eight minutes, Chef. Eight minutes? Yeah. Chef Claudio thinks I overcooked my lobster. I just have to push through and execute this lobster dish. I can't go home unless I'm Canada's first master chef. Yeah! Can I have some? <laughs> it's uh, homemade egg noodles with uh, lobster sauce, aromatic spices, and then lime segments. Eric, you've learned how to cook lobster to a T. The noodles are amazing. The sauce, not too creamy and over the top rich, but is subtle with flavor. It's a fine dish that I'd serve in a fine restaurant. Certainly one of mine. Thank you. It's impressive. Eric. By using the guitarra, you have the perfect, what we call the Shanghainese noodles. You know, you got that nice, smoky, burnt flavor. Here is when you're mixing East and the West together, and you do it right. Very, very smart. Thank you, Chef. If you look back at the cook that you were when you first entered this competition, and you compare that person, that skill level, to where you are now, it's night and day. Thank you so much, Chef. Whatever the outcome is today, you need to cook. I am really nervous. He's getting a lot of positive feedback. Marita, please bring up your entree. I have black cod steamed in a terra leaf with pigeon pea puree, 
a fresh mango chutney on top and fresh cucumber sauce on the side. Maria, the pigeon pea puree, very nice. The tomato, sweet, concentrated, very strong flavor. The mango, bit of sugar you added to remove a little bit of the acidity. You have elevated this very simple dish from Trinidad. You've created a dish, in my opinion, that is a destination dish. A dish that people would travel for, which is a huge accomplishment. Thank you, chef. This piece of black cod, see how moist that is? How it glistens? That is exactly how to cook one of the most beautiful, delicate white fish that we serve in restaurants today. Thank you, chef. Perfect. I love cooking. I'm passionate about it. It is part of my personality. It's part of me. I have parties a lot of the time. I'm used to cooking for anywhere between 30 and 50 people. So I'm good at it. I really am. If I don't come out of there with a white apron, there's something wrong. Hello. What's your name? My name is Debbie. What are you making? I am making crab cakes with spicy mustard sauce and a mango curry sauce. The way she handles that knife. You have some great energy. Don't let uh, this beauty fool you here. I'm uh, <laughs> 54 years old, but hey, let me tell you, I can run with the rest of them out there. Debbie, what is your food dream? My cousin would like to build a little inn, and she would like me to be the chef. I want another career when I finish teaching, and I'm hoping today that you'll love my crab cake so much that you'll give me that white apron, and I'm telling you right now, You'll never eat crab cakes this good. Debbie, are you a competitive person? I'm good enough to be here. I want to win. I'm telling you, I want to win. All right, time's up. <sighs> uh, Debbie, so you got the yellow sauce, you got the white sauce. What's the difference? The mango curry one is more it's sweeter, but I like the mustard one, too. I like okay. something that's a little spicy. Is it as good as you say it is? Oh, I'm shaking. Watching you move around the kitchen there, cooking was a joy. Oh, thank you. And now it's just down to the taste. Oh. It has a good crunch to it. It's interesting flavors. Thank you. You hear that? Yep. Wow, crispy. You know your food, don't you? I do. I didn't get to be this size without eating it. <laughs> this doesn't usually happen, but I'm kind of lost for words. This is um... better good. Debbie, you promised me a crab cake that was tasty. You said the sauce was going to be spicy and sweet. You promised me that. And you delivered. <laughs> yes. Thank you. I'd be an absolute idiot to say no to you. The crust was light, some very fresh, bright flavors. Absolute yes. OK. That was absolutely delicious. All that's really left to do is to ask you to come up here and get an apron. Oh, my God. <laughs> come on up here, Debbie. Try this oh, on for size. God, I can't there we go. This. Thank you so much. Oh, Incredible. She's great. She's great. I'm going to have a little more of this crab cake. Hello, chefs. What's your name? My name is David. Hi, David. What dish are you going to be cooking for us? Uh, black hot sable fish and Dungeness crab potato salad. Wow. So, David, why are you here? I want to have this opportunity to change where I'm, what I'm currently doing. I'm a concrete contractor, so I do concrete work. I started doing concrete at 17 years old. I made some poor decisions. I actually uh, didn't finish school. I only have a grade 10 education, so when an opportunity like this came up to compete in something that I absolutely love, at my age, 
I, I signed up. Who inspires you to cook your best? My wife, my little boys, four and five. They're amazing. 30 seconds. What are you putting on now? I smoked an egg. You smoked a hard boiled egg? I, I smoked the yolk. Hello, David. Hello, Chef. How are you doing? Very good, thank you. The presentation is terrific. Really nice. Good sense of style. Thank you. Where did you learn to cook uh, cod like that? I've been cooking it for some time. Yeah, it's very important to get that skin crispy. Well, it is. Yeah. You're absolutely right. David, thank you. Thank you. Your boys, do you like your food? They love my food. Can they eat crab? I'm four and five. You know, I think they're still on carrots. When I eat oysters, I actually hide them because they love eating raw oysters. Oh, cod's nicely done. Flakes, smoke egg yolk. Yes. This is the miso sauce here? It is. Miso, sable fish. They love each other. Those are concrete mason hands. Yes, chef. And those hands did this. It's the best dish I've had so far. Incredible. I've never seen anyone that is a bricklayer or laying cement put food on a plate the way you did it. So elegant. It's a yes for me. Thank you. David, you have a beautiful family, and your food is beautiful. So it's a yes for me as well. Thank you. JJ, can you come on up here and help me with something? You're better dressed than us. <laughs> <laughs> we think your dad is an excellent cook. And we'd like you to give him something. Do you think you can go down and give him that? I think my dad's the best cook in the whole wide world. Of course, the choice to have a family was the best choice, but this has been the best choice in a long time. Black licorice and salmon from Michael. I think he'll trip up for sure. What would you be doing, Claudio, with your salmon and licorice? I would do a poached salmon in a licorice broth with star anise, clove, just kind of bump everything up. The booby trap with the salmon and licorice is that you can overcook that salmon. The licorice is so strong and so pungent that it can overtake the delicate flavors of the salmon. I'm gonna do a pan-seared salmon. I'm gonna do a nice, beautiful slaw. And with black licorice in this fennel, it's gonna be awesome. Oh, you might avocado. If you don't tap into your creativity, you're screwed in this challenge. Brilliant. They threw something at me they thought I wasn't gonna handle. I'm feeling freaking great. Right now, it's looking pretty good. So I did a pan-seared salmon, spicy mayo, black licorice, slaw. I think the plating looks like it's a marked improvement for you, Michael. Thank you very much. You've got some brightness in color. Your proportions seem to be coming together. You've got a balance to the plate. Well, it looks like a nice cook on the salmon. You've got a wonderful uh, coloration on the skin, crisp. Light licorice glaze that you marinate your salmon in adds just a wonderful little sparkle to it. Thank you, Chef. The first thing to hit me with the slaw is its color and then the crunch, crisp freshness. And then I get that underlayer of licorice coming through. And that, combined with a salmon, would have me coming back for more. Delicious. It's as if the pennies dropped. Thank you, Chef. Thank you very much. That licorice and that salmon come through like a star. And I love licorice. Textures, the freshness, everything came together in this dish. You got style, like me. But more important, you now have substance. Please go back to your stage. So, Graham, this is an incredibly interesting mystery mm -hmm. box. Tell me, what would you do with these ingredients? Sardines, they're more forgiving. You could do something really quick, like a grill or sear, or even do a quick pickle, you know, like you would do a herring. 
I am making today a sardine en croute, which is like a beef wellington, but I'm stuffing it with sardines instead. I think I'd grill the sardines, and I would do the vegetable crudo, like a little vinaigrette yeah. with all these raw vegetables, but I'd let the vegetables really sing. This challenge is almost like the acoustic version if you were in a band. Sabrina, how are you? Hi. Oh, boy. I'm starstruck. What do you have going? I've got a vegetable medley pickle. Quick little pickle. I love this idea. I'm soaking some beautiful sardines with some salt and lime. Wow. So have you done this before? I've done grilled sardines. The fact that you scored these, and not only scored them, but I mean, look at that. They're perfectly spaced apart. You look like you know what you're doing. Thanks, Elliot. Chef. Good luck. Graham Elliott. What? <laughs> Tammy, how are you? Hi. What do you got going on here? Right now, I'm doing a lime and cilantro cream sauce for my uh, Swiss chard. I'm going to do like a little Swiss chard tower. I'm doing a fried sardine in a little bit of flour, because sure. that's the way my mom does rainbow cool. trout. So it's Tammy versus Sabrina versus Jennifer in the sardine <laughs> challenge. Okay. It's going to be a battle. <laughs> hey, Tammy. Nice job, Tam Tam. What I've prepared for you today is a pan-fried sardine. I created a little tower of Swiss chard, and then I pickled the radishes and the beets, then made a small salad. First thing that draws you in, this, the beets. Gorgeous, candy stripe, golden red. Really good. Great cook on the fish, but it's full of flavor. Beautiful, Thank good you. job. Thank you. Well, the presentation, I think, is, is quite beautiful. Thank you. You've used a large plate, but you used it well. Absolutely delicious. Crisp powder skin, certainly not overcooked. Nice and moist. Nice job. Thank you. I'm feeling very good about what I've created and what I have the ability to do. The second dish that we'd like to taste was made by a home cook who created a dish that fully honored tiny, beautiful ingredients with attitude and style. Sabrina, please bring your dish up to the front. I made grilled sardines laying on a medley of pickled vegetables and a simple soft-boiled potato dressed in lemon juice and parsley. Still glistening, not overcooked. Now everything's seasoned perfectly. The only thing I would do is some kind of sauce component, a light little vinaigrette, just something to help kind of enrich it. But aside from that, near perfect dish. Thank you. It's beautifully cooked. You're definitely someone that should not be underestimated because you are a threat in this kitchen. Great job. Thanks, Chef. Holy garbanzos. Periwinkles. Conks. Snails and conch. David. Oh, my god. Oh, my goodness. Never made either of them. Get your snails. That's a lot of snails. The conch is very tricky. It's very difficult to get out of the shell. This is freaking crazy, man. So I would suggest that they put it in boiling water for about five minutes. That's when you want to pull it out, right? So it comes out That's easily. Right. Hey, our little guy. Sabrina. What's up, Chef? How you doing? Finding a conch. How did you prep this conch to get it out? I parboiled it for about a minute and a half. OK. Shocked it in water. Why are you shocking it in water? I would pull it out while it's still hot. Because right now, it's all seizing back up on you. And if I probably put it, put it back in, it might be overcooked, though. Yeah, that's what I'm scared of. Remember, this is an elimination challenge. There's absolutely zero room for error here. If I can't get this conch out of his shell, I'm going home. Michael. Hello, Chef. How are you? I'm well, thanks. How about you? I'm a little frazzled. At first, I my trouble was that I was looking at the, the ingredients as if I was lit. And that's impossible. Tell me what it is that you're going to cook. I'm going to do a nice, fresh conch ceviche. Now, have you worked with conch before? <laughs> Never. Well, I'll let you carry on. Thank you so Best much. Good luck. Thanks, Thank Michael. you. I am really proud to show this dish. It has a novelty aspect to it, but it looks cool. What you have here is a ceviche, and in front of it is deep fried mushrooms. When I think of conch, I think of me and my mother just walking on the beach when I was a kid looking for shells. 
So what it resembles is a shell that washes ashore, lets go of some ceviche, and the mushrooms would be the beach, as in the sand. OK, well, let's try this. I know a lot about ceviche. I'm from South America. I've made so many different types. This, I think, is genius, that you're using the vessel just to keep your ceviche in. I think that's interesting. It smells fresh. It smells like the ocean, actually. Mm. And it's tender, which is very difficult to achieve. It's a great job. Thank you. The ceviche with the little bit of heat, a little bit of acid, you didn't overpower it, which is very important. I'm very impressed. Thank you, Chef. I tribute to the poor fishermen of New Brunswick because they go and get sea snails at low tide. I skewer the periwinkles between little pieces of baked red peppers. The other dish is a take on a coquille Saint-Jacques. Wonderful. The sea snails are cooked beautifully. Sweet, innocent, unadulterated, fresh, beautiful flavors to them. Exactly like the way I would expect you to serve them if I were on the East Coast. Simple, simple, simple. Absolutely. Well done. Thank you very much, Chef. I decided to do a corn and conch chowder. So there's some oven roasted tomatoes inside. I use fish stock, and I finished it off with my corn simmering inside. the ingredient and it pops out. I mean, it really pops out. The only thing I would do differently next time is it needs a little more stock. It would need to be a little bit lighter. Thank you. I'm gonna do a classic miso marinated cod. And then I'm doing apple and papaya salad with a crunchy peanut butter and a vinaigrette. My family did well. They got my back. They knew exactly what I could cook. <laughs> Chef. Having your two beautiful daughters here today, that must have been an amazing surprise That was you. a wonderful surprise. So they chose salmon for you? Yes. So what are you going to do with that salmon? Maple syrup is one of my favorite ingredients. So I'm going to make a maple garlic ginger glazed salmon and crunchy peanut butter chocolate chunk cookies with vanilla milkshake. Oh, boy, that sounds terrific. Was that the uh, girls' favorites? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, for a while, it was just the three of you. Yes. Food was something that we sometimes ran out of, and I'd have to go to the food bank. I always found time to cook them something that tastes good, and that's the way I showed them that I love them. She's going to make me cry. She's going to make me cry, too. Miso cod with apple and uh, green papaya slaw. So is this a dish that you might cook at home? Absolutely. Try a little bit of that cod. The sweetness of the cod, beautiful. The fresh, crisp flavors of that coleslaw underneath really work well with the miso. And the Romanesco cauliflower, cooked beautifully. Just a subtle firmness to it, able to taste the wonderful freshness. Overall, a really great dish. I think you've made the family proud. <laughs> I've made a maple ginger garlic glazed salmon with papaya and tomato slaw and aromatic rice. My two daughters inspired me so much today. Look at that. Glistens, full of moisture, nice coloring from the marinade. That is really, really good. That is so moist and buttery. Great big flavors to go with a rich, taste of salmon. The green papaya slaw, crisp, fresh. Should be very proud. Thank you, Chef. I've always kind of done the right and responsible things, but this is my dream and this is my time. So, Mary, walk me through this dish. I'm doing a, uh, a pan-seared arctic char with a blueberry red wine reduction and a carrot puree. I've actually never had arctic char with blueberries. You sure about this? Um, I'm, I'm nervous, but I, I think it'll be good. Good luck. Thank you. 
Hi there, Veronica. Hello, Chef. Now, tell me, what dish are you cooking for us? I'm going to do a seared Arctic char with pickerel stock with clams and making some potatoes, carrots, and I'm going to throw some squash in there in the last minute. Sounds like you've got a lot going on. I always seem to. <laughs> I go big or go home. Good luck. It's really good. This is a pan-seared Arctic char with a blueberry wine reduction and a carrot puree. Blueberries and Arctic char. I've never had that before. It's fantastic. I love the balance that you've achieved here. The Arctic char is perfect medium rare, and the berries cut right through that. Thank you. Maria, this is a taste of what's to come. I'm very excited, really sincerely. Thank you so much. Presentation, I think, is outstanding. Just wonderful. This is a really well-balanced red wine sauce. You intensified those aromatic notes of the cassis, the vanilla, that work incredibly well with these wonderful East Coast blueberries from Nova Scotia. You're cooking with the mind of a chef. Thank you. I'm excited. I had just given up hope, and then they said my name. I made a pan-seared Arctic char in a fish broth with a garnish of potatoes and wild rice. You certainly took more ingredients than anybody in this room. So let's cut into the fish. How do you like that fish? It should be medium. Well, spot on medium. Wow. Smooth, silky, crunchy, a bit of bite. It's a very, very nice combination. Thank you. I think this is a very stylish and sophisticated dish. And the fact that you use these little pommes gaufrettes as part of the garnish, wonderful. Thank you, Chef. Beautiful, moist. You let the key ingredient shine there. If I could comment one little element, maybe a little knob of ginger would have given the broth a little pop. But overall, very well executed. Thank you, Chef. This is so fun. I love it. I I'm love having it. fun. Me too. Julia, April yes. Lee. How Hi. are you doing, guys? Thank you. I'm well, thanks. So, what dish are you cooking? We are doing a peach glazed grilled shrimp with an Asian slaw. I definitely think this is our opportunity to show the other home cooks that uh, we're forced to be reckoned with. All right, I'll leave you get on with it. Good luck. Thanks, Chef Michael. I'm trembling in excitement and happiness that they called our name. It's an Asian slaw with a peach grilled prawn and a parsnip fry on top. And who took the lead in this creation? I'd say it was really even. We both had as much say in every element. We made a great team. Visually, I like the composition. All right. It's really good. The shrimp's perfectly cooked, and the peach is sweet, so it has a great counterbalance to the heat. Really outstanding. That slow dressing is wonderful. It makes a perfect foundation for such a delicious shrimp dish. Well done. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. This is prawn farfalle pasta salad with pistachios, peas, and kale. The colors just jump out. Fantastic. I noticed you had soy sauce in your station. Yes, Chef. We used that to marinate the shrimp. You don't typically see soy sauce and Italian food together see how it tastes. Hmm. Never had a dish that tastes this way. This is a very new taste for me. That is delicious. It's an original. The soy gives you that great salt component. And then you have these little hits of the pistachio, the kale. You're a very clever man. Thank you, Chef. Jennifer, you were very smart, too, to follow Terry's lead. Thank you. 
Thank you. I should have judged today that I'm a serious home cook and I came here to win. Couldn't be more happy. They gave me the mackerel. I know it's fairly fatty, so I'm just grilling it and pairing it with quick pickle will help tame the oiliness of the fish. I've been fishing since I was a kid. It was one of my favorite activities to do with my father, so I'm feeling more confident than I have in the past. Not only am I not going home, I'm gonna win. This isn't bad, not bad at all. Veronica, what do you get? I got the red mallet. My mom loves fish, I cook fish for her all the time. So I'm feeling right at home right now. I'm doing something I know very well. When my mom visits me from Hong Kong, she always requests that we eat at home one day and I make this dish for her. I am going to do a Thai style fried fish. I'm gonna fry the bone as well. And I'm also doing like a Thai style sauce for it to be dipped in. Well, this is a Chinese way. I've had many times at Chinese restaurant. You gotta be very careful and make sure this part is very crispy because the head takes a lot longer and this doesn't take very long to burn. I'm well aware of that. I will be holding it with my life. I hope so. Meat is all about minutes. Fish is about seconds. Seconds make a very big difference when you're cooking fish. Smell it, Jen. It smells beautiful, girl. It is a lot more tricky, I think, than cooking chicken or beef because it is so delicate. Light and delicate. There you go. I need to flip it over. I don't want to lose the skin. Look at Jacqueline. Look at her fish. <gasps> yes! Thank God. Beautiful. Veronica, she's deep frying the whole head and spine. If she pulls that off, it could be a winner. I got one of the easiest fish here. I need to go above and beyond. It's a grilled mackerel. And the sauce is an almond puree. The beets I cooked in beet juice, roasted tomatoes, and then there's a radish pickle. It's a tricky fish to cook because it's so thin. It's perfect. It's a beautifully balanced, beautiful to look at dish. Honestly, it looks like we're in a restaurant right now. A great restaurant. Thank you so much. It is such a big, distinct flavor on mackerel. Yes. So what did you use to counter that? I did a pickle on the pieces of radish you see. Beautiful balance. Thank you. Well done. Thank you very much. Great dish. <laughs> This dish is me on a plate because it's cooking techniques that I know and love. I made a Thai-style fried red mullet with a fish dipping sauce and a papaya and carrot slaw. And what was the biggest challenge in you pulling this dish off? The biggest challenge was probably the fact that I only have one fish. One chance to get it right. Correct. Red mullet is a delicate, sweet, gentle fish. I'm a little surprised that you put it up against such a, a big, almost fiery sauce. It's almost counterintuitive. Oh. But it works. Thank you, Chef. Sweet, acidic, but very complimentary. And what I see here is nothing short of a love affair with food. That's the Veronica that we want to see. Thank you, Chef. This is typical Asian, using every single part of the fish. You make good use of the bone, and I'm just gonna dig into that. This is exactly how I would have done it. I am so happy to see you finally bring out the Asian in your cooking. I'm happy to see you happy. <laughs> well done. Thank you. I'm making a grouper cheek miso soup. A miso soup is a delicious light soup. Uh, the grouper will work perfectly with it. I have never cooked with fish head, but I do know that the uh, cheek is a very delicious part of the fish. In my family, the head of the table, which is my father, always gets the cheeks, and my mother always gets the eyes. Sean, you had the grouper's head. Yes, chef. Tell me how you went about the preparation of your dish. I made a stock with the grouper head in a, a pressure cooker. I poached the grouper cheeks. The bowl is lined with uh, some sesame oil, so as you pour the broth, hopefully the little bubbles of sesame oil will come up and it'll add a lot of flavor. The cheek I found just a little on the salty side. But Sean, the broth is absolutely beautiful. It is flavorful, it is rich. It has a long, lengthy flavor to it. The way you presented it, you have the cheek, 
You have a little bit of the skin, some enoki mushrooms, little treasures that float around that soup. That lingering sesame oil backing everything up is wonderful. It's an adventure. Great dish. Thank you, chef. I feel amazing. I feel like I've done my part for the team. These are ingredients that they worked with in the beginning of this competition. So now we get to see the journey, how far they've evolved, where they started, and where they are now. I want to celebrate Canada with this dish. I'm making a butter poached Arctic char with crispy charred skin, a carrot puree, pickled veg, and steamed clams. And Matthew has been absolutely fascinating and inspirational to watch his journey from day one to where he is now. I remember my first mystery box. These ingredients may have been daunting, but now that I see them again, I can cook with all of them. I'm going to make sure it's going to be plated beautifully, and it's going to taste really good, too. This is redemption. I want to win this mystery box. It's good. Everything's good. I'm making my take on fish and chips. I'm going to use pickerel, because it reminds me of my dad and, and going fishing with him when I was a kid. I'm channeling my dad today. The first time I cooked with these ingredients in the first mystery box, I made a really homey plate, but I didn't win. Today, I want to take a humble idea and elevate it to MasterChef Canada quality. Mary has gone with a pickerel. The amount of work it takes to clean, fillet, and make sure you get every single bone out, that is going to chew up a ton of the cooking time for Mary. Oh, yes. I'm definitely taking a risk. First up is Matthew. Matthew, please describe your dish. I made a butter push arctic char with pickled veg, carrot puree, and crispy char skin. Thank you. Thank you. And bon appetit, everyone. I tell you, beautiful presentation, nice use of space. This is one of his best presented dishes. Let me correct you, this is the best one he's presented. This looks beautiful. Beautiful little ribbons of zucchini. Nice to see he has a crispy char skin there, which will add yes. a nice crunch to it. Yes. Elia, what are your thoughts on Matthew's dish, please? I love the presentation. It's very clean and it has lots of harmony. The pickles, I really fell in love with the pickles. Chef John Horn, tell us your opinion of this creation. I think uh, Matthew did a very great job on this dish. I know Arctic char is a very hard fish to cook. It can go one way or the other very quickly on you. I thought the clams were beautifully cooked. Uh, the balance on the plate with the acidity was very, very nice. Marc Olivier, could you share your thoughts with us on Matthew's dish? The sweetness of the fish is really good. I did think it was missing a bit of seasoning, and uh, the fish was a little dry, but uh, overall, it's a pretty good dish. Matthew was inspired by having all of you great chefs in this room. He did a really wonderful job. Big, bright flavors. The presentation was very, very close to what you would see in a high-end restaurant. Next up is Mary. Mary, please describe your dish. I did my take on fish and chips. Underneath, I did a tartar sauce, and I did a tomato blueberry ketchup for you. Thank you very much, Mary. Thanks so much. Enjoy. You're excited for this one. <laughs> Beautiful looking plate. The aroma coming off this is absolutely spectacular. I've got to be honest, I was worried about the idea she's doing fish and chips, but she's elevated it. Yeah. Really unique dish. Connie D'Souza, how did you feel about Mary's dish? I loved Mary's dish. I loved her creativity with the pickled lentils and the tartar sauce. And honestly, I thought I would hate the blueberry ketchup, but it was so savory and really smoky and delicious. Really well done. I'd hire her for sure. Awesome. Robert Reynolds, what are your impressions of Mary's fish and chips? I love the presentation. Being from England myself, I grew up on fish and chips. The fish is perfectly cooked in the middle. My only thing is that the batter's a little too thick for, for the amount of fish that's there. The fish was perfectly done, and the tartar sauce with the lentil, that was fantastic. You know, I love the concept of Mary's elevated borscht. Borscht is typically a hearty red beet soup, but I'm making a golden beet borscht. Mary's a master at taking classic traditional food ideas and elevating them and giving them a little bit of a twist. I'm also making beet cured trout. Typically, when you're curing fish, you need 24 hours to really get the flavors in there. I don't have that. So I need to juice the beets and really bump up the flavor in the marinade. 
you know, raw beet juice could be a bit harsh, a bit too earthy. So I hope she gets that right balance. Thank you so much, Dad. Hi there, Mary. Hi, Chef Michael. How are you? So you've chosen to do borscht. I have. And this is not any ordinary borscht, though. It's going to be served cold, but also raw. Exactly. Any concern in slicing that piece of trout nice and thin and evenly? I'm actually doing it in little triangle medallions. It's going to be bright, fun. It's going to look like me on a plate. <laughs> <laughs> look forward to trying it. Thanks, Mary. Thank you so much, Chef. <laughs> Mary is just starting to take her marinated trout out of her beet mixture there. Yeah. And that is a messy job. Curing takes sometimes days. The only protein on this plate is that fish. And if it's not cured properly, the dish won't work. Now, her idea was to cure that trout in the beet juice. But I don't think there was enough time to achieve that cure. Pat, she's squeezing some lemon juice onto it now. That'll speed up a little bit more of a cure there. That's a smart move. This tasting is so different than any I've done before. First off, there's a table. The judges are sitting in front of me. This is super terrifying and legit. <laughs> I did a take on borscht. There's little pillows of a horseradish goat cheese, beet cured trout, and caraway breadcrumb. I suggest we all dig in. Mary, this trout is a little flat in flavor. The cure didn't fully sort of take place. But what I really love about this, that acidic hit that you get, absolutely wonderful. Works really well with the earthiness of those beets. Love the bright color. It is borscht in a very modern kind of way. This is sort of new, energetic, vibrant thinking. Overall, a great dish. Well, Mary, it's colorful. It's fresh. The taste to me was just right. The trout, the cream, and that crunchy crumb all adds complexity and balance to this dish. Thank you very much. When you eat everything together, the goat's cheese, the soup, the herbs, the trout, all the textures, all the flavors, they just sing. It's really delicious. Thank you. Jeremy is taking four sushi-inspired dishes. He's got a lot of things to pull together there. Now, Jeremy's sushi boat has to be elevated. It can't be sushi that you get in a kiosk at a shopping mall. This has to be sushi that we've never seen before anywhere. I'm making sushi because sushi got me my apron. So I'm thinking sushi's going to get me the title. Hi there, Jeremy. Hey, chef. So tell me, what you're doing right now with the papaya? This is the traditional way to make papaya salad. So you cut into it down to close to where the seeds are at, and then take a slicer and you do this. That's the way that it's traditionally made in uh, Southeast Asia. That's amazing. And then wow. you get all these little Whiskey uneven friends. cuts. Yeah. How are you planning to tie all of these four dishes together so they make the feeling of a one complete entree dish? They all have soy, ginger, and wasabi. They all play on those elements. Sounds like you've got a lot to get done. I'll leave you to it. Thank Thanks you, so much, Jeremy. I made four different dishes. There is a deconstructed soft shell crab spider roll, and then a miso marinated baby octopus with mushrooms, a tuna crunch roll with wasabi mayo and crispy salmon skin, and then a ginger papaya salad. Well, you know, Jeremy, I was a little bit worried about the rice because you had it in the blast chiller and you had it in the oven. But you know something? The rice, to me, was perfect. I eat in sushi in some of the best restaurants in Asia. This is restaurant quality. Just absolutely creative and delicious. Thank you, Chef. Jeremy, this is a feast for one's eyes. And I know that you have been challenged at times with plating. You'd never know that looking at these four dishes. The tuna roll, very clean, very well executed. The soft shell crab, cooked beautiful and crisp. The dish that, for me, fell a little flat was the papaya salad. I'm looking for a little sweetness in it to make it sing for me. Otherwise, a really great job. You should be very proud of yourself. Thank you, Chef. So, Jeremy, here you have four very different things happening on one plate, opposed to having one composed main course that's very focused. You give yourself now four different ways to be criticized. 
you know that. Mm -hmm. The standout dish for me was the octopus with the mushrooms. You could have just served one dish and it could have been that dish right there. That's my advice to you is focus. You need to focus more. But overall, very ambitious and very delicious. Thank you, Chef. I'm gonna be making a seared cod in a little bit of a play on the clam chowder. I always wanted to be a cook. And then my grandfather passed away and uh, my grandmother needed somebody to run the business. 11 years down the line, I'm still there. Ale, let's go. This is my opportunity for me to reclaim my passion. We'll get her done, we'll get her done. Aaron, bring your dish up to the front, please. I'm feeling all the feels, you know? I need the judges to understand how important this is to me. Here we have a little bit of an upscale play on a clam chowder, sweet potato, chive oil, and a piece of pan-roasted cod. I gotta tell you, in three seasons, I've never seen someone so serious when their name is called for doing such a great job on a mystery box. I'm just taking the competition very seriously, and uh, I hope that it shows in my work. Here's what we're gonna do. You're gonna unbutton that first button on your shirt. <laughs> You're gonna loosen up a little bit. Yes, sir. You're gonna smile a lot more. <laughs> What do you do for a living again? Um, I manufacture valves, chef. And you cook this way. Those flavors pop. That sauce is divine. It really is. Thank you very much. Why aren't you a chef? It is my dream, chef. It is delicious, beyond delicious. Sweet clams. You can taste that ocean water. A wonderful cream sauce. Could do with a little bit more of an acidic balance, in my opinion. But that fish, oh so tender, oh so moist. Nicely done. <laughs> my sort of MO is doing classics with a twist. I'm gonna try and get a pea velouté done with uh, some tortellini uh, stuffed with celery puree and some seared tuna. When I think tuna, I think the Mediterranean and I think sushi. And I can't make sushi, so I'm going Mediterranean. I think I've barely scratched the surface of what I have to show. What is it about that tuna casserole that could trip up these home cooks? In a tuna casserole, it's often canned tuna. It's also a strange combination. You have cream and fish and cheese and noodles. There's so many things going into it that don't make sense together. Hi, May. Hi, Chef Alvin. Hi, Mira. Hi, May. What's happening over here? That is going to be the glaze for my yellowfin tuna. Amazing. Yeah. Where's the pasta? Pasta is sitting right here. It's pasta is right there. You're not making your own pasta. I want the other components to really shine through. Okay. That can be a good strategy. Thank you. It's a seared tuna and gnocchi with confit garlic. I could actually see every element of the classic tuna casserole dish, but you've transformed it into something that is so relevant looking. I mean, it looks like a modern version. Thank you. What's the crust on the tuna? We drizzled some of the confit garlic oil on top. It's fantastic. This is an incredible dish. Maybe this is the turning point for you in this kitchen. Thank you. At this point, I'm thinking that this could be a winning dish. It's our tuna satake with celery root tortelloni, with mint and pea velouté. It's very sophisticated. It's intelligent. What is inside your tortelloni? It's a celery root puree. I tried to keep it simple. I wanted to mimic the idea of the cream of celery soup. You sound like a pro. Far from it, chef. You've just created the best dish I've had in four seasons. It's amazing. It's extraordinary praise, chef. There's nothing wrong with it. It's amazing. That sauce, it just pops with flavor. Your tortelloni are perfect. Perfectly cooked. You can tell they're handmade. What a shame it would be if you don't quit the job that you have now and become a chef. It'd be a real shame. May, please bring your dish up to the front. I'm feeling a little bit nervous. Everybody went a total different direction than I did. 
So it is uh, Asian-inspired casserole flavored with bonito, pan-fried tuna, and spinach, and then made pureed peas. It is an interesting little presentation. It's almost as if there are two worlds here, the classic homey-inspired tuna casserole, and then the modern interpretation of the tuna portion of it. And then the green sauce is your pea and spinach. Let's give that a try, an interesting combination. Very rich and savory. Again, a nice savory background, has that little creaminess from the cream sauce. It's a nice nod to the tuna casserole. Thank you.